Hey, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to all the superstars all around the world. My name is Frank Salas. I go by the name of the talented Mr. Salas. And today I'm bringing you a training and presentation on how to flawlessly manage your projects with a virtual team, even if you've never managed another person before. So we're, we are recording this live right now. If you're joining us live, let us know if you have ever managed another person. If you've managed another person in any business, virtually, in person, type a one down in the comments below. If you haven't typed or haven't managed anybody in another business before, type a two so I know who I'm talking to and I can tailor this content specifically for you. So we have people like uh, Brenda in London who has checked, who has managed other people. We have Natasha who has managed another person before. Great, so you guys have a head start on you. Annette has never managed another person and she's out in Germany. So I really appreciate you guys participating. This training is definitely going to help you guys out. This masterclass is for you if time owns you. If you have inconsistent sales in your business, if you're a one-man show, this, web, this master class is definitely for you. And if your business operations are disorganized, this master class is especially for you. So if you resonated with that, you know, make sure you close all tabs. Make sure you turn your phone on silent. Make sure you shut off the TV. You know, I know it's Wednesday night in America. Lots of people are watching Empire. Make sure you guys are busy building your empire right now because this next 30 minutes is going to really help serve your business and shape the organization for your business for uh, you know, the next few quarters to come in your business uh, journey. Now this masterclass is not for you if you have flawless systems in place. So if your business is operate, operating smoothly, this might not be the best investment of your time and you might wanna take another training. Um, if you have SOPs, standard operating procedures for your business, this training may not be for you. If your business operations are frictionless, meaning there are no bottlenecks, there are no pain points in the operation side of your business, this training may not be for you. And if you have already scaled your business, this masterclass is not for you and you might wanna invest your time in another training. So wanted to get that out of the way just so we make sure we had the right people. Really appreciate your support, but if you're uh, meeting this criteria, you might wanna log off and go do something else. Now that we've got that done, I wanna make you guys a promise, guys. I wanna make you a promise. I'm going to have a bonus Trello tutorial if you stay tuned to the very end. So this is the time where we're gonna get started in the content. If you're catching us live on Periscope, make sure you share this out to your followers on Twitter, on Facebook, on uh, Periscope as well to get a lot of people in it because a lot of people definitely need to know this kind of value. Really appreciate your support, guys. And thank you for everybody joining us live on the Zoom call on the webinar. So stay tuned, we are going to be having a project masterclass, um, for sure. Um, and Trello is a project management tool that's going to show you how to manage your projects and we're gonna go through it step by step and it's like you and I are going to be working side by side. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it and take you how to uh, run your project. So this is a sample of how I organize this and you might be looking at this and saying, Frank, this is three dots that says hit list, target acquired and target eliminated. I'm going to show you how to organize your hit list, how to set up your target acquired, and how to eliminate your targets all with Trello and manage them with a virtual team. Now, I'm about to hook your swag up, guys. My name is Frank Salas. I go by the name The Talented Mr. Salas, and my expertise is in entrepreneurship, real estate, social media marketing, building virtual teams, and outsourcing to the Philippines. My lifestyle is that of a location independent lifestyle, meaning I don't have to be at an office, I don't have to be at a certain location, I can just kind of do what it, whatever it is that I want to do wherever I want to be in the entire world. I do have multiple streams of revenue, and guys, I got a confession to make you. I am chronically helpless. I'm helpless in Excel. I'm helpless in graphics. I'm clueless in Google Calendar. I can't even book my own appointments. PowerPoints, like this PowerPoint, I didn't make this PowerPoint. My virtual assistant made this. This right here is something that was done by my virtual assistant under my guidance, and I have no idea what I'm doing on websites. I was stuck being stuck. I had no time, 
I had no energy and I had no skills. So no time, no energy, no skills. I was stuck. And how many of you guys have been in that position where you're like, okay, I want to take my business to the next level. I understand I should be writing blog posts or filming videos or connecting with influencers, consulting with clients, doing some Skype calls, you know, really following up with my leads. Everybody wants to do that, but we don't have any time. We don't have any energy because we're busy doing those, you know, busy chores of our businesses. No skills. If that's you, type a one down in the comments below. If that's you, somebody who, you know, was stuck being stuck, type a one down in the comments below. We got some people like Brenda out in, uh, out in uh, London out there. Natasha's her, her, her. No time, no energy. We got Annette out in Munich, Germany saying the same thing. Gotcha. I want to introduce you guys to the rookie me. So you guys earlier met the talented Mr. Salas, who is an expert in this and a serial entrepreneur and that. I want to introduce you guys to me or to the rookie me. The rookie me was the rookie me was selling real estate. I was making 100 calls per day and time owned me. So I was selling real estate out in Austin, Texas. I was, you know, hungry. I was a young kid just blowing up the phone saying, "Hey, can I sell your house? Hey, can I sell your house?" looking for uh, listing presentations. "Hey, did you find an apartment to move in? Are you still interested in buying these lots?" I was making 100 calls a day, and was I getting results? Absolutely. I was taking a lot of action, and I was taking massive action in the right places, and it was making me a very comfortable living. It was working. But I didn't own time, guys. Time owned me. And how many of you guys, yeah, I ran out of my mind. Time owned me, and I wanted to get my time back, so I knew I had to do something. I was fed up. I was fed up with what was going on in my life, my lifestyle. I didn't have time for sleep. I didn't have time for friends. I didn't have time for family. And most importantly, I didn't have time for fun. I was making all this money. I was closing all these deals, but I did, just didn't have the time to enjoy life. If you're resonating with what I'm you know, putting down, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, let me know in the comments. Like, I can't be alone. There's gotta be a lot of people who are out there. We got uh, ATL who's joining us live on Periscope who says, that's how he feels about school. You know, you can feel about this, about your business, about your job, about your school. Maybe you're an athlete. You can feel about, feel, you know, about this on your training. Maybe you're an actor or an actress, and this is your career that you're going down. You know, when you decide to be great, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, and it ran me out of my mind, absolutely. I wanted my time back, and I knew I had to do something. There was just something that had to change. I could not go on doing my life like this day in and day out. Something had to change. And for you guys, that might be the same way. Something has to change for you. You can't be going to the same office job. You can't be running your business with the same systems in place. It's not scalable. It's not sustainable. It's going to drive you crazy. It's going to drive you out of your mind. There's something that you need to do different, but you don't know what it is. You know you need to outsource, you know you need to scale, you know you need to delegate, you know you need help. There's so many things you know you need to do, but you just don't know where to start. So where I started was I started my virtual team. That's exactly where I started. And when I started my virtual team, I said, okay, look, I'm, not no, I'm no longer going to be a one-man band. I'm no longer going to be the bottleneck of my business. I no longer was going to be the friction point of my business and this just needed to run more smoothly. I wanted to run more companies. I wanted to go on more vacations. I wanted to go on more trips. I wanted to hang out with my buddies more. I wanted to catch some football games. I wanted to go to a weekend in Vegas. I wanted to just do a lot of things. And in order for me to get there, all, all signs pointed me to starting a virtual team. I knew that I didn't want to invest the capital in my business to hire uh, a team here locally in America and I wanted to outsource to some place like the Philippines where I outsource exclusively and I'll get into that in a lot of my other material but that's was what was important for me some people might want to outsource to their country that's a personal preference that's how you want to play the game I want to leverage and allocate my resources uh, to the best of my ability and make my money and my dollars go further so I outsource specifically to the Philippines that's just a personal belief that I have and uh, if you're picking up what I'm putting down make sure you share this out Make sure you invite your followers. May Simmons uh, says that she feels like she was wasting her time at something that you're not good at. Absolutely. Early, like I said, you know, I wasn't a pro at 
making graphics or Excel or PowerPoints or websites. That wasn't in my zone of genius. That wasn't in my RGA, my revenue generating activities. That was something better suited for somebody else. And when somebody else was doing those things for my business, I started to get more business. I started to get more leads. I started to generate more revenue. Things were starting to unfold for me. So when I first got started, I started with one assistant. And one assistant was able to make uh, my outgoing phone calls for me. And I was only receiving 20 phone calls a day. So if, if you're listening to this right now and you get a lot of phone calls right now, let me know that you get a lot of phone calls. Type a one down in the comments below. Uh, type a one down in the comments below. If you're somebody who takes a lot of phone calls in a day or makes a lot of phone calls in a day. I, I was on the phone so much that I felt that my phone was glued to my face. It was just like right here, like, hello, how's it going? This is Frank's face. And Frank's phone is attached to Frank's face. It just never would go away. And when it would go out of there, it, it would go, it would just like really focus on my, or focus my attention on my phone and I couldn't build my business. So I decided to hire one assistant and have that one assistant handle my outgoing calls. I went from making 100 plus phone calls per day to taking incoming 20 calls a day. And I was very selective and very purposeful with the phone calls that I received because my virtual assistant then was able to handle those uh, phone calls. That allowed me to save 20 hours per week of not being on the phone and with those extra 20 hours that I had now put back into my uh, resources or my time, I was able to sell more real estate and I was able to build a business. So for those of you guys, like Natasha is maybe taking phone calls for her a coaching business for her a personal training business right now if she had a virtual assistant her virtual assistant could handle her follow-ups her virtual assistant could handle the incoming calls and she could only uh, speak to the people that are qualified that are that are working with her and she could save some time and invest that time into creating content in the form of video streams video uh, vlogs blogs that she could then attract more people that would maybe call her phone more and then her virtual assistant could then screen those phone calls and qualify them so that she can then only be on the phone and spend her time with people that are going to work with her. So that's where you can model that towards any business. The key is to remove yourself as a bottleneck, handle the things that only you need to handle, save your time, and then focus your time on your RGA, your revenue generating activities. And here's how I handle big projects. So for me, at the time, outsourcing my virtual assistants to handle my phone calls was a big project. I had a lot of phone calls. I was making 100 phone calls per day. So the first step was I had to analyze. I said, okay, I'm making 100 phone calls per day, but where am I making these phone calls? Where am I getting these leads? So then I organized in Trello, which we're gonna go through a little bit later if you stick around to the end. I organized, okay, these are where I um, make my phone calls from. These are where I uh, make my phone calls uh, to, or these are my incoming phone calls. So these are my outgoing, these are my incoming. And then I broke that down. Okay, of my outgoing phone calls, how many of those are going for uh, lease appointments? Of those, how many are for listing appointments? Of those, how many are for follow-ups, or for landlords, or for the title companies? And I just broke that down, I analyzed that. Then I organize that into different piles. Okay, these are the people, or these are the calls that I make typically to landlords, clients, lease, uh, lease uh, renters, home sellers, home buyers, developers, investors, flippers, wholesalers. I just broke that whole, that whole thing down into categories. Uh, and that was how I organized that particular project. You can apply this method to any project. Maybe you are a, um, maybe you are a wedding planner and you are receiving uh, 200 phone calls a day from brides and not all of those brides can afford you. Well, you gotta analyze, okay, who's calling you? What do they want? What are they seeking? What problem do they have? How can you solve it? And then organize that into a, uh, a pile, a funnel, a Trello board, a piece of paper, wherever that may be, wherever, regardless of whatever that is, you just gotta organize it. And then after you organize what you're going to do, you have to say, okay, this is how it's organized. How am I going to execute? And before you move on to the next step, execution, you have to organize your plan of attack. And that could be, okay, I'm going to hire one assistant just to handle 
for me, it was I'm going to hire one assistant just to handle my outbound calls. I'm going to have one assistant who is going to handle the posting of my listings that get these uh, that get these calls and so on and so forth. So I allocated my resource on there. Now, then after you organize everything, then you want to execute. We're going to break these steps down even further. After you execute, you want to cash in. And that's where we start talking about revenue generating activities. The things that make you money should be on your to-do list every single day, guys. And there's some tools that you need to make this get done to help you out in your journey. These are all free tools that cost no money. These are tools that cost zero dollars and zero cents that you can download right now. There's plenty of other tools, but these are the four basic ones that are gonna get you started in that way to start managing your projects. First and foremost, we have Gmail. Gmail is free. Everybody knows what Gmail is. If you don't, Google it. It's, it's Google's uh, mail service. It's free. Um, Trello is a very powerful uh, platform, a very pro a powerful project management tool. It's very easy to use. You can drag and drop. You can add images. You can add comments. You can tag other people. You can tag your team. You can tag people outside of your team. It's super powerful and it keeps all of my projects crazy organized. And if you stay to the very end, I'm going to show you exactly how I use my Trello board and take you uh, in the behind the scenes of how I make that happen. Uh, up next is Skype. I absolutely love and adore using Skype because most freelancers and most virtual assistants and most people on a virtual team are on Skype. It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like the AOL, if you will, of emails back in the early 2000s, late 1990s. Um, so Zoom, is, which is what we're doing right now, um, I love Zoom because it's very low on the resources and you can have up to 50 people on one call on Zoom. So if you have a big project, you can absolutely get yourself um, in front of a lot of people to manage and organize this whole thing. So those are the tools that are absolutely free that you can download right now. And make sure you guys write these down because they're very useful and I use these every single day. So let's go ahead and go back to the first part of managing a project. First, you have to analyze. And when you analyze, you have to allocate your resources. Um, and, and May Simmons asked is if it's more than 50 people, then reach out to me and I can guide you in some, in some tools. But Zoom actually has a paid feature that you can have up to 500 people for a certain amount of monthly fee. So if you have more than 50 people that is necessary to be on a call at the same time, which is very rare, um, and I have a few, several different companies, that's very rare when 50 people need to be on one particular meeting. But it does happen, and you can use Zoom for that. It's just going to charge you on a monthly fee. Great question, May, and I really appreciate that. Keep your questions coming in if you have any questions. So cool, cool. Now, the first thing you want to do is allocate your resources. So what are resources? Resources are your time. Resources are your energy. Resources are your staff. Let's say you're paying somebody a monthly salary. Well, guess what? That money that you're paying them is buying time. And now you have to allocate that time in a way, in a manner for your business to be uh, profitable, for your business to be efficient, and for your business to really stand out and be at the, at a, operationally speaking, at a top position. So allocate your resources. This could be, you know, okay, we're going to have this person run Hootsuite to manage this promotion of this webinar. Or it's going to be this person is going to handle all the emails that are getting sent in. So your job is to handle this. You want to identify the most efficient way to achieve success. So for example, let's say you are a gardener and you're starting a new project to get more reviews on your Facebook page from your existing clients. So first thing you gotta do is allocate your resources. So one of your resources is you have to allocate your clients. Allocate your emails. When you allocate your emails, now you can take those emails and say, okay, these are the people that are clients. Your job is to email them and ask for referrals. Your job is to follow up on those referrals, and your job is to uh, identify and measure who those referrals are coming from. Ready, break, and now everybody goes and does their job. So your job is to identify those, uh, the most efficient way to achieve success. Then after you organize, uh, so after you identify, then you set a game plan. Again, you, you go here, you go there, and then communicate effectively. And communication is very crucial to this part of 
outsourcing, delegation, building systems, scaling with a virtual team, scaling with an in-office team, your communication is so crucial. One of the things that I constantly say on a daily basis, if not hourly basis, on my uh, businesses is the definition of success looks like this. When I say the definition of success, I mean, all right guys, we're gonna do a webinar and the definition of success is we're going to give people a lot of value and get them interested in possibly hiring a virtual assistant or just start outsourcing their business and leave us a testimonial for how they started delegating ever since engaging with our material. We had a question come in, uh, sorry we didn't have a question come in. Um, so once you communicate effectively, now you can move on to the next step because as you communicate effectively, you're gonna set responsibility. Okay, your job is to ask for testimonials. Your job is to follow up on the testimonials. Your job is to um, identify who has left those testimonials and now we can reward them for doing that. Then we gotta define greatness. I say this every single day, guys. The definition of greatness is we get a lot of people who leave us reviews on Facebook that we can then thank and then ask them for referrals. And that's that right there. So that's the organized part of it. Now on execution, the first thing you gotta do to execute is take action. You've got the game plan, you've analyzed, you've organized, now you have to execute everybody. And when you execute, the first thing you do is you take action. It doesn't have to be perfect, you just have to take action. I mess up all the time and in this presentation, which I did in 45 minutes, or I should say my virtual assistant did in 45 minutes this morning here in the Philippines before like an hour or two before this was even done, you're gonna see typos, we don't have emojis on all of this, like I think right here we ran out of time and now you just see these little dots and a few emojis here and there, just execute, just take action and as you're managing projects, check in. Check in and say, hey, how is that uh, PDF going? How is that uh, PowerPoint going? How is that email campaign going? How is, the, um, how is that new blog post going? How is our Pinterest going? How is our uh, Hootsuite scheduling of all of our promotions going? Just check in and see where they're at. Don't micromanage, just check in and say, hey, what's the status? Like as a business owner, if you hire somebody to do business with you and, you're, and they're doing some work for you, there's nothing wrong with you saying, Hey, what's the status of this? That's why in the military or, or any operations, you're like, what's the status of this? What is the status of that? It's okay, it's like, okay, cool. You know, they're, they're asking for the status and that, that kind of sets a tone that, okay, my boss or my employer, my team leader is now going to, to say, boom, they're gonna check in at intervals and when you check in, that opens up the, communi the communication. So let's say you do check in. Hey, what's the status of that PowerPoint? You know what, Frank, uh, I got the PowerPoint done, but I feel it's a little unclear and I feel that we can improve here, here, and here. Boom, that's perfect. That's the kind of communication that you want from your team member and that's the kind of communication that you should uh, allow as a team. Remember, building a team is all about communication. I know I'm spending a little bit of time on the communication, but it's just so important. I'm gonna move on to the next part and talk about quality assurance. Let's keep it real, guys. Entrepreneurs are crazy. Entrepreneurs are crazy and we want what we want and we want it done a certain way. We are very, uh, we are very picky, we're very particular, if you will, and we have a high level of standard. And if that's somebody that's you, type a one down in the comments below. If you're somebody who has a high level of standard, especially when it comes to your brand, let me know if you're picking up what I'm putting down by typing a one down in the comments below. I know that I get so many, you know, uh, blog posts, graphics, presentation. It's just like, ah, oh, I, can't, I can't associate myself with that. And for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm overzealous, I'm over, I'm over uh, eager, and I'm expecting perfection. But that's just me. That's my personality, and that's what I demand. It can't always be perfect, but I want to make sure that that quality is there because people expect a certain amount of quality with my brand. They expect my presentations to have emojis, to be very clean, be, to be very modern. And we got a lot of people that are picking up what I'm putting down, like Mitch, like uh, Natasha on New York City, and Brenda out in London. So exactly. And so to, in order to get that quality assurance, what I love to have is I love to have love tabs. And what that means is, let's say you get a blog post or a graphic that wasn't good, that just didn't look right. I say, hey, thank you for taking this action. This, this is starting to get a lot more clear. I'm expecting things in this color or in this color palette. Or this is an example 
of what I would like. This is a very similar result of what I'm seeking. Can you get closer to that and then work with that? And that's just gonna take time. My assistants and the people that work with me, whether they're in person, whether they're on virtually, they have to get used to my style. They have to get used to my standards. And that's something that just takes time. And with communication again, and with these love taps, where you guide people to what you want and how to best serve you, that's really going to get the execution and the quality assurance of a project where you need it to be. It does take time, and it's not gonna be perfect the first time, and the more you communicate, the better result you're going to get. So hopefully that was very clear for you. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to uh, reach out and, uh, and uh, chat out, and chat, and chat out with, uh, with us. Now here's my favorite part, cash in. So who would love to cash in on their project? Let's say you outsource, type a one down in the comments if you'd like to cash in on all this work that you've done, because organizing, analyzing, planning, if you want to cash in on all that, type a one down in the comments below, like that's next level stuff. Those are boss moves. A lot of people talk about the boss lifestyle, but they're, you know, you gotta have those boss level moves. Like Annette out in Germany says she's ready to make boss level moves and cash in. Mitch. Natasha, Brenda, you guys are awesome. Really appreciate you guys' support. Um, yeah, you're ready to make boss moves, and when you make boss moves, you gotta take a few extra steps before you make those boss moves. So you gotta check out your metrics, and from your metrics, you're going to learn what, what worked and what didn't. So okay, maybe this hashtag was better performing. Maybe this graphic was better performing. Maybe this uh, booking system was a lot easier. Maybe this copy wasn't the best, and you're going to be able to learn what worked and what didn't. Um, and yes, so Mitch says he needs website completion, so he's like, absolutely, I need to get my website up and running and just to get it done. And then after that, you're going to deliver to the client. So whether you're delivering a home sale like I was doing as a realtor, or maybe you're going to deliver some personal training like Natasha out in New York City, you, whatever you're doing, you're going to deliver that to your client. And after you deliver that, you know, then you're gonna ask for that testimonial. When you ask for that testimonial, you're gonna be able to put that on your website and that testimonial is going to build a, a better conversion rate for your services. That testimonial is going to be a case study for you and the work that you do. And if someone's gonna give you a testimonial, guess what? They're probably willing to give you a referral and that's gonna open up the floodgates for referrals coming in to serve you, to get you some people on your team and so on and so forth. So. This is all part of the process, and it does take a while to manage projects like this, but once you put the time, the effort, and the energy into something like this, you're going to be able to see a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. So guys, I wanna unveil to you guys a brand new site that I have. So I'm unveiling my brand new site exclusively, exclusively to you guys here on this private masterclass and on Periscope right now, so you guys are the first to hear about it hear about it and see about it. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and show you guys my, um, my brand new website just so you guys can check it out and where you guys can catch all of my replays from here on out. So I'm gonna share another screen. I do have a Trello tutorial coming your way, but I wanted just to share with you really quick exactly what I've been up to and how I use this for my website. So I didn't program this website at all. And here's where you can see all of my new replays. So all the replays that I have up are gonna be on this tab. And you can keep in line with all my webinars, all my master classes, and here's what my website looks like. Right there, so go to talentedmistressalas.com, check it out. This was a project that I recently completed. Let me know what you guys think. I'm looking for some feedback. It's not all the way done, but I wanted to unveil it to you guys first and foremost. And now I wanna share with you guys, actually share my screen with you guys again. So share my screen with you guys now. So the bonus tools that I like to use, this is for you guys right now, the bonus tools that I like to use on here for managing projects is IFTTT. That is if this, then that. For example, if I post a new video on YouTube, that new video would go directly to my Tumblr. If I post a new video to my uh, Tumblr, that new video will go to my Google Plus, and so on and so forth. So that really helps me repurpose my content, and it makes my team more efficient. 
So really, when you're trying to promote, it's really crucial. Now, Zapier is that next level. When I get an opt-in on my website, that'll add it to my Google Sheets, which would then add it to my ConvertKit, which would then trigger a sequence on an email. So that's next level. So IFTT, if you're getting into automation, is a great starting point. Zapier is if you're already cool with IFTT and you're ready for that next level of automation, Zapier is something that's really gonna help you and serve you in your business. Now Slack is for people that maybe have a team of two or three or more, and that's gonna allow you to get notifications on certain things. Like Zapier has a lot of integration or integrations where, well, and so does IFTT. Well, let's say somebody does sign up to your website on a, on a webinar, on an on a opt-in. Well, now they can send a message to your Slack and you can say, boom, we just got all these, uh, we got this new opt-in on Slack. And now you can say for today, we got, new, we got 10 new opt-ins or this lead page was working or this lead magnet was working. That's something that's gonna help you out. So I wanna share those bonus tools with you guys. Those are a little advanced if project management is something that's new to you, especially with a virtual team. But I wanted to share that with you guys um, and you know, definitely check those out. Now, as promised, we're going to do a walkthrough on Trello, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I run a, uh, my project management. So I'm gonna share another part of my screen with you guys right over here. Hopefully you guys can see this. If you guys can see this, uh, let me know. I'm going over here to Trello now. We're pulling up Trello live in real time. So these are all my Trello boards. So this is where I have all of my projects. So I've got multiple projects, as you guys can see. Let me know that you guys can see my screen and everything over here. So right over here on, where am I headed? Where am I headed? Where's the demonstration? Oh, maybe I didn't save it. Okay, perfect. We can see, you can see, awesome. So we're gonna make a brand new board. Let's, let's do this, this is perfect. We're gonna do a brand new board. So I'm gonna create a new board. The name of the title is Project Management Masterclass. I'm gonna create that. And now I have a new board. Okay, really cool. What's a board, Frank? Well, over here I can add members. So I can add certain people, like let's say, and you know, these are some of my VAs right here that are working with me on these particular projects. Let's say I wanted to add one of my VAs over here. Uh, her name is Candy. I can just click on her and now she can be on there. Let's say I want to add my VA, uh, Diani, or this, you know, VA, uh, the graphics person. I can add them to this board and now they're going to see everything that happens on this particular board. Um, and if they're not, if, let's say they're a freelancer, I can just kind of add them onto my team. I can add them onto my team. So now I'm going to do three things. I'm gonna create three different lists. So I'm gonna have hit list, I'm going to have target acquired, and this makes me feel like I'm cool, like I'm James Bond or something like that. You can type whatever you want on yours. It could be, you know, to do, doing, and done. I like to, you know, drop it out like this because it makes it more fun for me. Target eliminated. So, you know, that's how I break it down. This could easily be, you know, uh, to-do list. This could easily be uh, doing, and this could easily be done. Easily, that could be one of those three right there. Easily one of those three. Now, okay, this is, what, this is perfect. So this is for my uh, presentation for this actual webinar right over here. So for this webinar, we have the name of the promotion, we have the promo captions that are going into our Twitter, that are going into our LinkedIn, our Facebook page, our Facebook group, our Google Plus, our Tumblr. We're promoting, and these are the captions that they can use. These are the acceptable emojis that my virtual assistants can then use on this particular promotion, and these are the acceptable hashtags as well as the call to action. So that's, that's coming from me. I spent maybe five minutes breaking this down. This is where I drop the uh, the content. I'm like, okay, this is it. You guys have it all. You guys will then go and manage the project. So first, I have to, to say on my hit list or on my or on my to do list. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say Frank must uh, write copy. Okay, done. Then um, I know after that my my virtual team 
is going to come in and they're going to schedule or they're going to make the graphic they're going to schedule post and then they're going to run analytics uh, run analytics there we go so first and foremost I'm I let's say I start writing the copy so my target is acquired I am now writing the copy for that webinar so that's my job and I'm going to tag myself by adding my members here and that's my job so Frank Salas that's his job you can see that by the FS I can further than say I can further than do stuff like uh, edit the labels so I can put green for green light or I can put for uh, blue for starting and now you can see what that color code means. You can color code it however you want. So let's say I'm gonna put it for blue. So now it's very easy to identify that this right here, this blue means that I'm starting it. So anybody who looks at this says, okay, Frank just started writing copy. Let me go ahead and make the graphic. So now my virtual assistant knows that, okay, I'm going to write the graphic now and I'm gonna assign that to uh, one of my VAs. So once they're on that, they can see that there and now they get an email now they get a notification and now it says hey you've been added to this to-do list you've got a job and I can come up in here and then I can further make it easier for them to serve me by doing this I can add a checklist and when I add this checklist right here I can say all right the checklist is going to include all right the first step of the checklist is to write a graphic and if you're picking up what I'm putting down on Periscope, share this out, invite your followers. This is some good stuff. Um, so uh, find the template. Get photo for guest speaker. Then you can also do um, create promo graphics. And then uh, Twitter resizing. Uh, Instagram resizing we can do uh, let's see Facebook resizing so we can resize all the graphics um, then we can do um, let's see what's the other one LinkedIn resizing and there we go and so on and so forth we can even do um, register a, a hat actually that's up under the make graphics so that's it that's all that we need for the graphics oh actually uh, submit for approval and then after and then after approval uh, start scheduling after approval start scheduling so boom now we have that and that's on there now I can leave a comment on here and say hey guys this is a really important webinar that we are doing make sure that the graphics are uh, high resolution and matter of fact I really like this graphic and then I can add a graphic right then and there thank you for inviting your followers it's Wheezy I really appreciate that that I can add a graphic right then and there from my computer from Google Drive from Dropbox from OneDrive or I can just attach a link so I can go over here, like one of my favorite websites to find high resolution photos is pexels.com. Pexels.com, this is absolutely free and there's no charge for something like this. There's no charge for something like this. Hey, Fola Shade, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, I really appreciate this. And uh, I'm gonna ask for you guys who join us live to go in the Facebook group after this is done and say, hey, this was a great uh, webinar. You guys gotta check the replay because a lot of people need to hear this. There's no offer. I just want to get this value to people because this is going to help you build those systems in place so now you can have a virtual assistant on your team. So Pexels is a great place. So let's say uh, we're doing an automation webinar. I can just type in automation here on Pexels and this is going to find me a high resolution photo. So now we're looking for a high resolution photo on automation. There's not one, but let's just type, you know, see business. Um, this one, I like this one. We'll just roll with this one. So now I click on this. And I can just take this link and copy this and take it over to Trello. And I can paste this over here. And the, you know, the link name is perfect example. So now people know, all right, this is what I'm looking for. So there we go. 
now they have the link right there that it's really huge like this is a big picture this is a link you know and now they can see that that's exactly what it is that I'm looking for now they have all of this here in front of them and I can go on there's so many things that you can do you know you can have a due date so all right this is due on Friday this is due on Friday and because this is due on Friday it's due at five o'clock because our webinar is due at, at seven so let's go ahead and save that boom now the due date is there and I can add specific due dates to specific people um, now when I have this specific, my, my virtual assistant who is associated to this tag is like what is this project what is the perfect example what graphic do you want me to make what is a project management masterclass so she's like on the ball she knows that there's a job to be done and she's like this is unclear I don't understand what's going on that's a, that's a sign of a good team when your team is reaching out to you and saying hey hey boss I don't know what's going on here guide me guide me and that's really gonna help you out right there so there's a bunch of other things you can do there I'm not gonna make this into a Trello full-on training but I wanted to make sure you guys got a lot of value in this and saw the power of, of Trello and how this is so boom now there's all this up and at a glance easily at a glance you can see this right here um, you know it's got one comment it's got one attachment it's got a checklist it's got a due date and now you can see that and then I can further click on here I can add a label and you know say that this is let's just say this is done so this is done so that's our color for done so now I have this done we're gonna move on to the next step and let's say I wrote the copy already let me go ahead and change that label to green and this is done as you can see right there it's got the done the starting I can now take off the starting uh, label because I don't want to confuse people and I just click on it one time and boom it goes away it absolutely goes away so hopefully that was a clear for you guys on how that worked out now I'm going so now I wrote the copy now we made the graphics now it's time and now that right so now that those are done I'm going to move it over to target eliminated so boom now at a glance I can see what's done easily I can see what's done at a glance right then and there boom now I can go from hit list over here and schedule these posts. So now we can schedule the posts and we still gotta wait for the analytics because we haven't done whatever. So now that we schedule this, we can add another checklist. All right, we need to schedule this on Twitter. We need to schedule this on uh, Periscope or on, uh, sorry, on Instagram. So I'm just gonna put IG, I'm doing this one handed because I got my other phone on the, my other hand on the, on the phone real quick so now I'm getting get two-handed so this is LinkedIn of course we got Facebook of course our blog our website you know RSS uh, Google Plus and so on and so forth so now that you have your uh, checklist ready to go now you can assign a due date and say this is due uh, today at you know five o'clock and now you can save that so boom, and because this is past due, it'll say, hey, this is past due. So that's another benefit of Trello, and you can organize that. Now, earlier where I had these swipes, I can do something really cool, like either I can do something like this, like take a screenshot. This is what I like to do. I like to just take a screenshot of this, and then copy that, and paste it right over here. I'm not gonna do that right now. I can take a screenshot and copy that and paste it here. I can easily do that or what I can do is I can just input the link to here and say hey here's here's a link to our Google Docs Docs and I can just you know add that link right in here I can attach it right there or I can just uh, add it as a comment there you go there's a swipe copy you're good to go and now because they're on my team they now have access to that copy right over there so boom, now we got that. Let's say they go through the whole checklist. It shows percentages. Check this out. This is really cool. It shows percentages of everything that you do. So what's this, so now you can say, hey, what's the status of scheduling the posts? I'll say this all the time. What's the status of scheduling the posts? All right, the status is at 88%. So I'm like, okay, I know exactly where they're at. And once they're done, it'll say 100%. It'll turn green. Now they can click over here. They can drag this over to the target eliminated and boom now they have all this completed and now they're going to just take the analytics take it from the hit list target acquired target acquired 
and now they're going to do whatever the analytics does. Now, what I'm not showing you guys is that there's SOPs behind this. So there's an SOPs on how to run the analytics that makes their job a lot easier. Um, but we're not going to go into that today. I just kind of want to show you how I manage the flow of the project. So once this is done, they can go from here and drag it over, you know, change the label. And my most gratifying feeling, my most satisfying feeling in business is when I see all of these being green. I love seeing that. That means my job is done. That means everything is good. I can delete this Trello board. It's just like, ah, it just feels good. And that's what I love about Trello. It's free. There's absolutely no charge to use it. If you guys are catching this live on the webinar, I'm gonna give you a link that is uh, gonna help you out and it's gonna help me out so I, I can invite you guys to uh, join Trello. And there's no extra cost, so it's gonna give me some cool benefits, it's gonna give you some cool benefits, and if you guys invite more people to uh, Trello, you can actually get a free month of Trello Gold. So I'm going to invite some people uh, here, and hopefully you guys take advantage of the uh, Trello information. And here's a special link. If you guys want the special link for uh, Trello, make sure you click on the link in my bio on Periscope, uh, or go to bit.ly forward slash talented one and join our uh, private Facebook group. So for those of you guys who have not yet joined Trello, I did leave you a comment or a link down in the comments. And if you guys are watching this on the replay, there'll be a link in the YouTube as well as on my website for you guys to uh, join Trello. There's no charge. It helps me out. It gives me a free month of YouTube gold. And you guys can share this with your team and that'll give you a free month of uh, Trello gold. And what Trello gold does is really simple. Like I can take this welcome board now and I can change the uh, background if I will. So I can just do stuff like this. So I can click on this and change the background to either a different color, um, you know, red, blue. I can put a different photo. And now you can see like this really cool ocean backdrop, which is really cool. So you can kind of you know see what that looks like. So that's that's the benefit of having Trello Gold. You also get to integrate with different apps. And you know, there's a bunch of APIs or ways for the app to work with other applications. But uh, that's it. That's today's presentation. I hope you guys found some value in that. I hope it was very helpful to you guys. And if you're somebody who has not yet started to delegate or outsource your business, you know, now is the time to get started. I do have a promotion going on on hiring a virtual assistant as well as a DIY course on how to hire your own virtual assistant and work with them. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, stay tuned, keep your eyes on me. Feel free to reach out to me if you're ready for a VA now. And I do have a promotion that does include a, uh, that does include the beta access or the, the initial access, the pre-launch access to my VA Academy. So I just launched that, uh, you know, it's, it's not even publicly launched. It's something that I'm gonna launch here towards the end of the month. And now I'm generating interest around it. So. Uh, I would love to leave the floor open to any questions that you may have on virtual assistants, on outsourcing, on project management, on delegation. Uh, yes, hey, the price point is going to be very, very affordable um, for the for the VA procurement and the find of the VA uh, for you and the VA DIY. So just stay tuned. We're going to drop it out. You know, uh, the retail price is going to be around four ninety seven for the VA to get launched and it'll slowly work its way up to 997. But that's not the pre-launch price and that's gonna be for everybody that supported me with this particular training. Um, I'm open to any feedback of any blind spots that you may have, anything that may confuse you on this particular training. Um, but other than that, that was it. So I'm gonna sign off on the recording to make use of your time. I strongly recommend for you guys to join my inner circle, the private Facebook group, the Talent Tribe, where I serve those with talent by transforming them into thought leaders. If you guys wanna check out my website, go to www.talentedmrsalas.com. Make sure you get on my email list. I show you outsourcing tips, productivity tips, social media hacks all the time, and I invite you to my events just like this. So thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna stop the recording.